could literally create some more supportive housing um and we could you know we could help our veterans that are homeless we can help our elders that are that are are homeless and, and people that are struggling out there so the time is now and and, and we're looking forward to it and you're right we're going to need coordination both at the town level and the state level we're doing an, we're, we just made a pitch to the city of brockton for some arpa money and we met with plymouth county and then we've got it now we're talking to the state to get the money and you know the the state would like to see local arpa before you ask for state arpa on a particular project so everybody kind of has some skin in the game so that's the kind of coordination we're going to all need help with at the town and at the state level so Thank you. Um, I think um, it's true in terms of like coordination and in, uh, with the ARPA funds. I think that we need to have more of a comprehensive like public health services. We need to strengthen some of this, um, the community based services in relation to public health. But this is true. This is the time to kind of reimagine um, in terms of um, how our, our towns and our cities are structured. Um, a lot of the organizations do this in a, like a siloed type of way. And so if there's a way that we could like move like together in terms of like um, public health services and kind of move forward. Coordination, again, that's a recurring theme, much appreciated. Um, you know, there is obviously, as we all know, a massive shortage of affordable housing. And I can't stress enough the successes we've had in Plymouth with public and private partnerships to create that affordable housing. And <clears throat> whether that's through some portion of the ARPA funds are, um, targeted to partnerships like that, that can be fast tracked, uh, brought online very quickly, or it's separate um, funding. Either way, um, you know, we were able to bring on, <clears throat> you know, a large swath of affordable housing, probably greater than other than what the housing authority has done, probably the greatest uh, increase in affordable housing um, in a short period of time. And I think that that model could be used with these funds and other funds to really make a, a massive difference. You know, at, as to the um, the economic development point, particularly restaurants, you know, workforce housing is something that's, you know, completely integral to that whole issue. So that, that and I know that, um, you know, that we've had in, in this forum, we've got one or two builders also represented. So I think that, that point is um, is well considered here in this. Um, I'd like to hear, honestly, from, from Andrew as a landlord, what you're seeing out there, if you don't mind speaking to that for a minute. Uh, not at all. I think my internet is uh, flaking out a little bit on me. Um, from what <laughs> I see, I, I, I feel like landlords really aren't being pressured to compete that much on price there's just not enough available units. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you see, and honestly, Boston hasn't been that bad in terms of rent increases compared with a lot of other like mid-sized cities like Phoenix. Um, but even still, we're like, we're getting to the point where the bank was wondering why I wasn't charging 3K rents for one of my four bedrooms. It's, it's like, how, how, could, how could a regular family afford that? Right. Um, and for the most part, they, they can't. Like it's rental assistance, which is, and rental assistance is just addressing a symptom, not the root cause, right? We, okay. the, the, the problem is the policies I want, the policies that I think are best for people kind of aren't good for me, right? Because they drive rents down, but they should. Coming back for a minute to Andrew, when you, when the process is so time consuming and so indefinite for landlords in terms of um, helping tenants who need it um, get funding, landlords just you know, run and hide because they simply can't afford it. So we need to really look at that process. Um, but in, you know, the bigger point that Bill just made is, you know, is an a, a applause to everyone I see here. I mean, when we're working so hard to try to meet demands and make sure people are homed before the cold weather, I mean, real, you know, day-to-day -day crises that, that you all primarily are dealing with. And we never have time because um, all I see here are people who don't do it for the thank yous and the appreciation or the applause and notoriety. I, all I see is people here who just do the job at, because there's a need. 